It's as simple as if you abuse your soil, you abuse your bottom line. My, the basis of my whole business is the soil. If I don't take care of it, if I don't do the best job I can promoting good soil health, then my bottom line will suffer. Because the healthier my soil is, the better my crops are going to do. And I think, as a whole, the quality of my crops will be better the better my soil biology is. We're talking to people that, uh, you know, have historically cropped and tilled uh, this ground for, you know, 70, 80 years. And, and it, it takes time to rebuild some of that. And some of the things that we're talking about where we actually can see that happening. Uh, like the farm we're at here today, you know, uh, some of these management changes can actually build some of those things back in the soils that help help it function. and and. Uh, and what we're hoping, and with through some of our demonstration farms, is that, that it will actually have an impact on the farmer's bottom line. You know, our partnership with NRCF, I can't, I can't say enough about that. Uh, they, they have taught me so much in, in a limited time here about soil and how it works. And like I said earlier, most of us have, have had the mentality of dirt. And it's just dirt, but it's not and they have provided the insight to look at it and understand it a little bit better and the willingness to partner up and spread the word and, and try to get out that we need to get change our mindset of how we manage our farmland our rangeland and nrc is nrcs is very focused at the next generation, the next level of protecting land. The same practices that promote soil health are the same practices that protect water quality because by increasing infiltration, increasing organic matter, we are increasing the capacity of that field to hold those soil particles and that water in place rather than sending it to the stream where it can become a problem and, and cause pollution. Now is an opportunity to us, to us, for us to really focus on what's below the ground. I think we've known this for a long time, but we've re never really took full advantage of our conservation practices and what we can do by applying them in a system. So by starting to look below the ground and treating the soil like a living soil, a living organism, because it is living and starting to feed that, all those successes we've had in water quality and conservation, we're just going to be able to build upon those and go further. This whole movement has been led by farmers and ranchers, and we think that needs to be part of it. but as the technical arm and the agency that specializes and leads in conservation, we need to be part of that movement as well and we need to support that every way we can. So my vision is that we need our staff to the point where we can be out there leading the effort and showing and demonstrating some of this stuff. We're not there yet, but we're, we're gonna get there. And I really think that for as much urban sprawl as we're seeing, and if you look at the numbers, about how many acres of, of land we're using, losing out of production every year. We have to get better at what we're doing. We have to preserve the soil and make it as rich and productive as we can. And the natural way is the obvious way. And it's through growing crops, growing cover crops, growing your own nutrients to put the organic matter back in the soil. It's the natural way. And I, I think if we do that and we spread the news and get the message out and it catches on that we can be more productive in the U.S. than we've ever been since we broke out the land in the 1800s and 1900s. It's just a matter of, of keeping an open mind and not being stuck in the past and stuck to tradition to look at something new to have something better in the future. And I really think that the, this, the whole soil health thing, the, the, the no-till 
and everything is where it's all going to go eventually. It's going to have to.